Just give me a mic check. Check one, two, one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Hey everyone. Howdy, howdy. I'm Sam Vincent, uh, Gabe Coot's brother. Thorn Bell, Gabe Coot's very good friend. Uh, we're here because we want to show you guys some little vignettes, some little scenes that we shot this past year. Uh, my brother, as many of you know, passed away almost one year now, uh, July 23rd, 2019. And he passed away on his motorcycle. He had a heart attack on his motorcycle and uh, crashed into a pole and died from injuries related to that crash. And my brother was, my brother and I were, have been actors our whole lives, performers. My brother was a very talented person, funny person, an extraordinary personality and human being. And we felt that we wanted to continue his legacy by creating some scenes uh, where I would play my brother and uh, we would create some things about his life. Um, and they're not based strictly on reality, but things and concepts that, we d that captured his spirit, captured some of the things that he went through, some of his struggles. And we decided to, uh, put some scenes together and, and, and just shoot it because it was, for me personally, it was a way of processing his loss and, and, and trying to continue and sharing his story because I, I thought it would be important to, uh, to keep his, his, his life alive. As, in, as, in, as talented as you are, I'm gonna interject here because I thought you were absolutely nuts when you told me that you guys were gonna do this so soon after he passed, but then I kind of said to myself, yeah, I can kind of get why he wants to do this. But, yeah. Um, <clears throat> For me personally, sometimes the way I like to deal with uh, difficulties in my life is I like to do something. I want to be active. I don't want to get trapped in my own, you know, shell of despair, if you will. So I like to get out and do something, be active. So um, this idea came to me is that I want to tell Gabe's story and, and I didn't know exactly how it was going to form and I didn't even know if I should play Gabe but there's a very interesting story where Andrew who's behind the camera at the moment who directed all of these um, vignettes Andrew Gerard uh, who Gabe met with in maybe the last six eight months of his life and they became fast friends and and he became engaged with Gabe's who, the person that Gabe was and he was totally on board and he had some kind of quasi mystical moment where Gabe spoke to him in his head after he'd passing, you know, Gerard, you're going to make a movie about me. And <laughs> <laughs> of wow. course, Gabe was like, and listen, listen, uh, you got you to gotta tell my brother, only Sam and Sam alone can play me. And, and, and wow. Andrew revealed this, uh, this, this moment to me that he had had this Gabe in his head telling the story and that kind of made me break down and go, oh my God, because... I had the same idea and we, you know, so it was just kind of like, okay, then we've got to do this. We've got to, we've got to do this. And Doran, of course, got on board because Doran and, and, and Gabe had this epic adventure down to LA. It was like Gabe's last kind of bro trip. He always wanted to get back to LA and, and explore all the aspects of LA that he'd always been kind of champing at the bit to kind of like do, you know, it was all about you know, Jimmy Dean at the Griffith Observatory and, 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 and you know, all the, those, <laughs> all the all different the, areas around yeah. LA that Jimmy yeah. Dean hung out at or yeah. whatever. So <clears throat> we, we said, we got to capture some of these, these things. So the first actual little scene we want to show you is, is not the first scene we shot, um, but it was something that captured, I think your guys' relationship yeah, it's, first and foremost, it's, what's really interesting about this is like, apart from you stepping up to the plate and playing your brother so soon after he passed away, which I could never do, um, playing your, this is the first time I've ever played myself. <laughs> it just sounds stupid. Yeah, I know. Dude, you're just gonna be you, you're gonna be you. Yeah. Actually, be you with a little more pizzazz. Yeah. Just a little more, yeah. you know what I mean? Because 
I just came out playing myself. And yeah, I, I, at one point, Gerard was like, dude, you, you are playing you. You're a pretty boring guy. <laughs> I was like, what? But I'm, so, I mean, yeah, that was, that's, it's been interesting seeing other people play themselves. Yeah. Seeing it would, Burkhardt play himself, seeing Faustino play himself. And yes, I did have lifts in my shoe to give me added height, literally, like I had, I was like I was wearing heels inside my Jordans to give me that height so that, you know, so that Gabe was considerably shorter than me. But um, aside from that, which is also genius, that was Andrew's suggestion, but. We'll just set up the scene a little bit about, like in the last few months when you guys were really kind of bonding, even before the, the, the road trip, you guys were really getting together, working on auditions together. A lot. You know, supporting each other. <clears throat> yeah. Um, to try and get your stuff down for, for these, these auditions. And obviously Gabe's, one of his hugest inspirations for um, performing, especially when he was younger, but it continued through his whole life, was James Dean, Jimmy Dean. And I think Gabe always wanted to drop the knowledge on Jimmy Dean, like all aspects of his life, the, the way his technique uh, was kind of revolutionary with the, the actor's method coming out of New York and, and all the people that came from that kind of class of, of new actors, new wave of actors that were kind of on the scene. And Gabe really loved that whole generation, especially James Dean and all the aspects of, of, of his life and, and, and that kind of like allure of, of who he was. And he was always, you know, he was kind of dropping the knowledge. He always, dro he always had a, a Jimmy Dean nugget to drop, no matter what we were talking about. Like, as long as it involved acting, somehow he would find a way to fit in. <laughs> and I'm not a huge, I was not, I was not a huge Jane Steen fan, to be honest. Like, I, yeah, anyways. Um, so this, this scene we're going to show you kind of encompasses all those little aspects uh, that we just described. Uh, so hope you enjoy this little, this little scene. Thanks a lot for helping me with my audition earlier, man. Yeah, man, that's what we do. I'm telling you, I gotta book one of these things soon. Cause this casino singing gig is definitely not paying the bills. You know what I mean? Dude, you've been killing your auditions lately, man. Something's about to break. I know it. I don't know, man. No, man, seriously. That last scene you just did, man, that was epic. It was like, it was like Jimmy Rebel, man. I was like, I got the bullets. Look. What the heck was that? Dude, James Dean, Rebel Without a Cause. I told you to watch it. Oh, man, I didn't have time to watch that, man. Come on. I've been trying to get gigs this whole time. I, my, my brain's just not there. I didn't, I didn't watch it. I'm sorry. Okay, you know what? Next time we do Goodfellas Spaghetti Night, we're watching Rebel Without a Cause. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's called Goodfellas Spaghetti Night for a reason. Goodfellas Spaghetti Night. Nothing else. Dude, trust me. You watch Rebel Without a Cause, it's going to up your audition game. Seriously, what do you got going on? When's your next audition? <sighs> Show me. All right. I got a one-liner tomorrow for Great. a feature. What is it? What's I'm the line? I'm playing a movie usher, and the line is, yeah. sorry, folks, the movie sold out. Okay, sorry, folks, the movie sold out. Okay, hold this. Let me show you how it's done, okay? <sighs> sorry, folks. The movie sold out. The tickets are gone. They're gone. They're all gone! Scene. What do you think? I definitely felt something. Mm -hmm. You added a bunch of lines, though. Dude, dude, it doesn't matter. Jimmy Dean was always improvising. The point is, get out of here and get in here, man. Get in here. Huh? Yeah. Okay. All right. Rebel out of cause, spaghetti night it is. Got nothing to lose. <laughs> Uh, that, I mean, just, just on an aspect of just shooting that thing and, and how we're total, like, first of all, hats off to the way Andrew mm -hmm. made the lighting. Like, I don't it's know. Brilliant. He just, we're, brilliant. we're talking like his camera, two lav mics and us just setting up. No, no walk traffic and, control. Walk and talk in downtown in Chinatown. Downtown, <laughs> right, like, you know, Pender, 
and 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 it's just like no lockup. Yeah, and it's just like we had to do that a few times before we got the shot. And believe and, me, you say and, you say it like it's no big deal. Walking in those things is not. Oh easy. yeah, he's got the <laughs> lifts in his shoes and his his calves are like my calves are killing me, man. My calves are killing me. So to, um, to be like almost through the scene and have like you know one extra like five seconds. Yeah. Like hey, you guys doing a movie? Yeah. yeah so what's man. going on here? <laughs> anyway, it was uh, it was it was fun shooting. I like shooting in that kind of that gorilla kind of way. It was fun. But I like that scene kind of captures Gabe's enthusiasm helping for, for helping people yeah, man. and the way that he loved to, he always was so encouraging for people working on their auditions, working on their, on their stuff. And he, he really was passionate. Um, and so many things that I heard from people after he passed yeah. were just messages of, um, your brother was so, when I was getting into the industry, he was successful and he was doing his thing, but he was always took the time to say, you can do this. If you really want to do this, you can do this. You just got to dedicate yourself and you got to have passion for it. And, and I've heard so many. And helping people overcome yeah. their objectives. Like, you're better than that guy. What are you talking about? You're better than <laughs> Like, people that I know that are like doing really well today. Yeah. You know, even like, like I won't call out any names. But yeah, they're like, yeah, Gabe was, I remember him before I got my first credit. He was like, yeah, you should do this. You should do that. Let's get together at my place. Yeah. Let's go over this line. Let's go over these scripts, whatever, you know? Yeah, so I think that, that, that that's the essence of, and Gabe wanting to share what he was passionate about, whether, whether it was James Dean or motorcycles, it didn't matter. He was gonna, he wanted to share that with you, you know? You, he wanted to say, this is what, this is what's so freaking cool, man. You gotta check this out. So. But you, you never actually saw Rebel Without a Cause, right? No. No. Never. <laughs> so, 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 but, that, uh, so, but you ended up watching eventually, yeah. right? Like when months we were, later. Yeah, like, when we were yeah. kind of actually shooting this whole thing and we're like, dude, you gotta watch it now. Gabe's gonna want, want you to have to see this. So we finally ended up watching That's it. That's not the first film, but we'll, 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 yeah. we'll, we'll do it that later. This whole thing with, in, in, in this whole uh, scene as well, we talked about this is kind of this thing, ongoing thing of a good fellow spaghetti night. Well, what, 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 what was that with you guys? Well, for us, it was like we had these bromance moments. And I say bromance because it was like literally we get together, cook food. We, we were all fans of Scorsese. Right. And, you know, Goodfellas was the number one movie we'd watched mostly. But, you know, anything, Casino, yeah. Goodfellas, like that whole gangster movie night. Mm -hmm. was a big deal for us. Just to like forget about the other stuff we were learning and just rewind scenes 15 times. Like, oh my gosh, look at the camera move. Like, I'm gonna get the papers, get the papers. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was right. just, so, yeah, so. Yeah. Basic, this next scene that you're gonna see is basically the continuation of that, that, that insistence of Gabe saying, okay, well, next, the next. You've never seen Rebel like, Without a Cause? Yeah, you're gonna see Rebel Without a Cause. Forget Goodfellas for one night, we're gonna watch this. And uh, well, we'll watch, we'll watch the scene. It's just, Gabe was a huge fixture. Anywhere he went, whether he, he went to a motorcycle mechanic shop or you know, a cafe or a, a, a microbrewery, people remembered him because he wanted to talk to you and talk to about whatever he was passionate about. And, and, and Black Dog's video on Commercial Drive, which is still in the business of renting DVDs and movies to people, so kudos to you guys. Vintage stuff. Yeah, and good stuff, like the old school stuff and everything, you know. So Gabe would always be there and he would always chat up everybody in the store, whoever's working, and they'd, they'd have to talk movies with them. Or Gabe would talk about some of the movies that he'd been in, especially one in particular, he was in the, the original miniseries, It, oh, yeah, back yeah. in the day. He played one of the bad kids uh, of the group of bullies, and it was there in the. Um, and he would say, "Yeah, I was in that movie, you know." And they go, "Oh, really?" You know, so we, you know, they talk a bit about that. But he always wanted to talk film or, you know, you know, chat about something. And so this is Gabe and Doran entering the the uh, the store to, uh, to 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 rent Rebel Without a Cause. All right, let's do this. I was thinking a little bit of Pulp Fiction action. Dude, we agreed upon Rebel Without a Cause, man. <laughs> I'm just playing with you, oh, bro. Oh, you mess out. with me. Okay, don't talk about Jimmy, man. You're lucky I reserved ahead of time and got this movie. Gabe, it's just a movie, man. Dude, Rebel Without a Cause is not just a movie, okay? The only reason you're saying that is because you haven't seen the movie. Trust me, by the end of it, 
You'll be drowning in a pool of your own tears, my friend. Uh, um, actually, you didn't really need to reserve it. Nobody's rented for like three years. Three years, huh? Yeah, well, at least someone still has great taste in film. Hmm? Yeah, man, that last person was you. Just give me the film, Nick. Put it on my tab. So this next clip kind of leads into a real life thing where you had never seen Rebel Without a Cause. And since we were doing this whole filming thing, it was like, okay, well, you ended up watching it. I actually did watch it. Yeah. You actually watched it. And we thought, okay, well, what's a scene that can kind of like tie up these, these ideas together of you having seen it kind of ruminating about what your thoughts on it and, and, and also tying in this aspect of you and Gabe wanting to go to LA for this epic road trip and him always kind of, kind of egging you on and pushing you to keep uh, pursuing what your dreams and adding another element uh, of something that was a little personal the, about your life and, and trying to add that into the, to, to, to the, the scene as well, uh, which we'll discuss after. Yeah. Okay. He had the bullets the entire time. Uh-huh. His acting was so open. Vulnerable. <laughs> it was unreal, man. Uh-uh. It wasn't unreal. It was real. Because Jimmy, he wasn't acting, he was just there, in the moment. Taking in everything life had to give him. That's why I'm going to LA. Experience life. You need to experience life, man. You should come with me, come to LA. <laughs> I'm not going to LA, man. Experience life. Yeah. How am I supposed to do that? Between auditions, the band, paying rent, and my whack ass car breaking down every damn day? Exactly. You need a new change of scenery, man. LA, we gotta go to LA, man. Sunset Boulevard, Venice Beach, the sun, everything. Gabe, I'm not going to LA. Okay? I can't. You can't. Dude, this whole time? What, you've been blaming yourself? I wasn't there for her when she needed me, man. I should have stayed home. No. You don't do that to yourself. It's not your fault. You were down there chasing your dreams, man. She loved that you were putting yourself out there. If she were alive today, she would slap you upside your head and say, Junior, get your ass back down to LA. <laughs> That's a pretty good accent. <laughs> I heard it once or twice. Well, seriously. <sighs> Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. And I'll never bring up LA again. <sighs> I guess we're going to LA. Yes, road trip, baby. High five me. That's right, that's what I'm talking about. Man, I was not looking forward to driving there all by myself, that's for sure. Whoa, 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 driving? Who said anything about that? Dude, it'll be awesome, we'll take my car. You be Goose, I'll be Maverick. <laughs> Who's Goose? Who's Goose? Uh, Top Gun? The movie? 
Tom Cruise? Oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Top Guns. That was a great movie. Classic. Yeah, okay. <laughs> For a second there, I thought you were gonna tell me you hadn't seen the movie Top Gun. <laughs> What, I mean, obviously for you, we tried to create a scene that had elements of, of, of kind of like pathos, but also humor, you know, or bring it into a humorous place near the end there. Um, originally, Andrew, who's, I have to say, Andrew is basically- A genius? A genius. It's yeah. shooting this stuff. Um, the, you go the, the the quality, the cinematography. The, it's just Andrew. Keep it's in just, mind, it, it was really cool for me because when we actually shot this scene, I had like an eight-hour break or something like that, and I was I, ha I happened to be shooting downtown Vancouver, and he was like, "Yeah, it's a perfect day." And I'm like, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah don't worry, it was fine. We got a rooftop, it's a friend's place, blah blah blah," and it's just him, yeah, controlling the camera, directing, and you and I on a rooftop. But getting back to the actual scene, you know, we would hash out these ideas and, and Andrew was trying to come up with a scene that we thought, how can we make this, you know, this impetus for wanting to get Doran down to LA with Gabe and also bring in a personal element to history. You know, for you, you and Gabe never had this kind of conversation, but I mean, for you being in LA before, and, and, and going through being down there and you went, you did the LA thing. Yeah, that's probably why I didn't want to, you know, I wasn't so gung-ho to go down there. And you did, <clears throat> and you did pretty well. I mean, you were on a series and, and things, weren't, things were going all right, you know, all considering, but unfortunately your mother's illness uh, had to bring you back to um, Canada and, and her passing and that was a huge, that was a huge ordeal to get through personally and and I, I'm, I'm glad that Doran was willing to kind of like go there with us because you know the scene required him to you know deal with something that's really personal it's not just something made up it was something that was you know that happened to him and and also bringing it around to um, the excitement of getting back to LA and getting this road trip going and it was funny because when Andrew sent me the scene and he gave me this, you know, so what do you think of this? And I was like, I go, I love it, it's great. The only thing is, <laughs> Doran's never seen Top Gun. And I mean, and that's just not believable. Everybody's seen Top Gun, so maybe we should switch it to another movie. <laughs> and then Doran messages me or something, he reads, he's reading, and I go, he goes, and I said, have you seen Top Gun? He's like, no, I've never seen it. I'm like, what? You haven't yeah. seen Top Gun? Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so I, I actually, I, I saw it about three weeks ago in Georgia for the first time. <laughs> My brother and his wife. Yeah, you messaged me like, I'm watching yeah, it. it's great. Uh, but I thought, <clears throat> okay, so I guess Andrew's not that far off the mark. He actually hasn't seen Top Gun. So we kind of added that in there. And we had some, we, we, like, if there's more vignettes to come, we have a continuation of this running joke that he hasn't seen Top Gun, which maybe we'll see. It was cool, because it was kind of hyperbole. Like, we kind of pushed it a bit in style, but I think it worked. Yeah. For us to end that scene the way it did. Yeah, it was um, fun. It was trying to go somewhere that's <clears throat> kind of like serious and try and lighten it up at the end. So, Kudos uh, to Gerard again. And also the, the rooftop uh, uh, vista was very cool as well. I thought it was a great... Reflective uh, yeah. set. Yeah. It I was... Don't remember, but they were having construction on two rooftops. It was... Dick, 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 dick. Oh, I'm yeah, going, are you right. serious jackhammers? And I was like, right. what are we going to do? All of a sudden, boom. They stopped. Yes. Like, Go! Let's yeah, do it you know. now. A moment of reprieve from all the construction that's going on in this city. And we'll, and so, the, uh, let's shoot it now! Side. You know. West side construction. Yeah. So this next scene is actually the first scene that we ever shot with Gabe and you together. Like we, we yep. yeah. So, and we, it, kind of, it kind of captures that whole, you know, bro thing of, of just, on the hustle trying to Two get, actors just trying to get it done. Yeah, you going to get your headshots, picking up, he's giving you a ride there. And we wanted to infuse a little bit of, of some of, you know, it was trying to capture private moments that Gabe may have had um, through uh, 
life, especially with, in regards to my brother was born with a congenital heart defect, and this is something that he uh, was always having to deal with at certain times of his life, certain crisis moments in his life where he had to deal with this, um, this heart defect. Um, he'd had two surgeries uh, as, a, as a kid, and he was always kind of like having to, at some point, he would have to deal with these things, and we just wanted to capture a moment uh, sometimes when we're dealing with things on our own and, and what that might be like, you know. And so we just wanted to try and pay respect to these things that sometimes we deal with on our own and we don't really share with people. So this is that scene. Is it right here? Yeah, that's the head shop place right there. Okay. I'm, I can't park here, so I'm just going to wait right here. Oh, don't worry about it. I really appreciate it, man. My car's messed up. I have no third gear right now. So. That's fucking fine. You gotta get a new fucking car. That car's pathetic, man. It's a piece of shit, but you know, it's fine. You know, I've been spending the last week in the hospital losing about 25 pounds of water, so my fucking dick is about to fucking fall off from it. Damn. Yeah, man. It's okay. not good. It'll be, I'll be a sack. I, I got, they want yeah, a tough yeah. guy look, and look. Oh. It's, it's, I got it's, still like it's not some... that tough, but I mean, you look like sexy chocolate love. I love it. <laughs> okay, I'll wait All here. right, later. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hey, Mom. Yeah. Yeah, I checked out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I checked out. I wasn't going to stay in that fucking hospital anymore. I was going to fucking blow it up. I told you. I don't want to be there anymore. Yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. I spent the last week losing 25 pounds of water. That's what I was there for. And all of a sudden, I'm fucking, they want to set me up for a liver biopsy? No. No, I didn't sign up. The, the, the fucking doctors, they just want to get more money. That's all they want. They want to jab me. No. I... Yes, I did. Yes, I got it. Yes, I'm gonna read it. I will. Okay. All right, mom, I can't, I can't talk right now, I got it. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I love you. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, all right, later, man. <laughs> What's so funny, man? Oh, fucking, these are big fat cat videos, man. They're fucking hilarious. Fat cat videos? Why do people you watch YouTube so I don't know, man. This is fucking hilarious. I'll people show you make later. Me sick, man. What's like, going on? At the old place, I never got business cards made on my head. Why would I do it here? I can't wait till this whole audition stuff goes digital because this is ridiculous. That's some fucking bullshit, man. So you didn't get it? Well, it's too expensive. I ordered like 25. Oh, that's fucking bullshit. I just bullshit. can't afford the, the bigger package. So anyway. what does that, does that mean you, your evening's free then? Yeah, of course, yeah. Well, you know what we gotta do? Movies and spaghetti bolognese. Good fellas, baby. Yeah, baby, let's do this up. Woo! Nice. All right, yeah, let's, let's go. get the fuck out of here. Ah. <laughs> uh. You gotta get a new fucking car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was, th this was the very first scene that we ever shot in this whole process for me. Mm -hmm. um, and you really went there on this one. For, I, I was blown away. Um, just seeing the way Andrew work and then, the way Andrew works and what you did in this scene, I was like, wow, this is a little too real. <sighs> you know, maybe six months before he passed, there was a crucial kind of turning point where he was gonna have to make a very, you know, uh, important decision in his life uh, where it was, do you want to extend your life? Do you want to continue to, 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 to live longer? And uh, they proposed that maybe now is the time to really seriously consider having a full heart transplant. 
And I think that that, I can't imagine what those things are like. It's a, it's a scary idea, especially when Gabe was at a point where he really wanted to just be like eating life and getting things done and doing things and knowing what this meant that it could extend and prolong his life. And also that, that sometimes we all feel like there's these little things in our life or we're dealing with struggles, whether it's uh, mental or, or maladies, and, and we feel like we're alone and we can't share the, that pain and that suffering. It really is ours to bear sometimes, no matter who we're, you know, who's in our life. And even though, you know, we had him talking to our mom on the phone and, and having this thing where people around you are trying to encourage you to do things and but you know sometimes it's they just can't possibly get what it feels like to be you in that moment and uh yeah we just wanted to kind of share that thing where we all can hide what's going on inside ourselves sometimes and um when because after going on that road trip and i thought Thank goodness you're there, because I think you're the only person who could have done it with him. Um, but I remember you were, I don't know, you were coming by my place for something or other. And this is after Gabe had passed, and you, dr <laughs> you drove up and parked right across from my house. And it was just like, <laughs> and your old car was like, <clears throat> I was just like, and it was almost like Gabe's voice came into my head and it says, dude, you got to give him gotta give him my car. I mean, this, wow. this, is, this is just pathetic. This is sad. And I was like, all right. So I remember telling you that Gabe would want you to have the car. And, and I know you were very touched by that because, well, first of all, you <laughs> need your car. car I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, like, as I said, Gabe was all about connecting with people. Yeah. And, and smelling the roses along the way and enjoying every moment. And I was more like, let's just get to LA. Mm. So, you know, in recent months, I did drive that. I took the long way to LA by myself along the coast with that car. It's still in LA right now. Sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, so that we covered that in the scene where kind of like a little bit of foreshadowing from Andrew to say that, you know, you got to get a better car. Come on. Yeah. This thing sucks. Yeah. You know, struggling actor holding on to his AB car. <laughs> um, How was the trip? How was the long way? It was probably one of the most beautiful drives, first and foremost, along the coast, through Oregon, through California, all the way, even within California, past San Francisco. I didn't go I-5. I went down the coast, San Luis Obispo, all the way down around Santa Barbara into Los Angeles, and it was so beautiful. I thought, wow. I had a few guilty moments where I was like, shit, he was right. Wow, this is gorgeous. It takes longer, but it doesn't feel that way because you hit a town like every hour or whatnot. But, um, you know, going down with him all along the, <laughs> the boring way with all the <laughs> semi-trailers and rocks yeah. hitting your windshield and whatnot, there was a lot of emotions, you yeah. know, with, well, with Gabe. I'm, I'm sure. I called you a couple times, I think, yeah. and I was like, dude, oh my gosh. You gotta help me with him on this on this situation. <laughs> and he's like, dude, That's just right. take a breath. He's like, I told you it would have been beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> yeah. So those are the scenes that uh, Doran and I shot together. Um, we actually shot some more stuff. Uh, in particular, there's uh, a couple of scenes that uh, capture the one of the aspects of Gabe that... Uh, Just come out and say it. He was a ladies' man. He was a ladies' <laughs> man. He was a ladies hopeless man. romantic. He was a ladies' man. He was, he was... Gabe was always a hopeless romantic. Um, and that, that, was, that was who he was, you know? And he, he was always very respectfully flirtatious with the ladies. And uh, <laughs> he, he, was a, he was a charmer, even, like... Growing up in high school, it would be, who is this fascinating little person with the huge personality talking to me? And, you know, and please stay tuned for more um, scenes from Gabe. Uh, we hope you enjoyed some of this stuff that we created. And, and, uh, and uh, hopefully you'll come back to watch more. Let us know what you think of, of 
this uh, material and your thoughts are always welcome. And uh, we'll see you next time for more The Life of Gabe. Cheers, bro.